background in the Air Force, military pilot, uh, Air Force Academy, but I studied engineering there uh, and then went off to grad school at Caltech before pilot training, so I have a little bit of the rocket scientist in me. But then that was superseded through the years from being an operational fighter pilot and then eventually a test pilot, where I finally got to combine both of my loves and interests in flying and the technical. And I'm back doing that again after spending nine years in the astronaut corps and flying three missions, which was wonderful. Uh, moved on from NASA and uh, a couple years later got involved with x -Corps Aerospace. Uh, this was uh, 2003 when we first linked up. And they at the time only had uh, maybe half a dozen employees, tiny little facility. Um, their founders started the company on, on their credit cards kind of thing. Uh, but they had a dream, and more importantly, they had uh, the technical ability uh, to uh, move that dream forward. And through the years, I've stayed involved with them initially, uh, helped steer some business their, wa their way, and was on the board of advisors. Uh, from 2005 on, I've been uh, their chief test pilot, uh, which has included to date uh, test flying the Easy Rocket technology demonstrator, and also um, flying all of the flights on the uh, X-Racer, which was a rocket racing prototype we did on a commercial contract. Uh, that uh, has enabled us to develop the technology, and then along the way I've also been involved in pilot kind of inputs for cockpit design and development of the Lynx suborbital vehicle, but that, uh, those efforts coupled with the flight experience we got with the Easy Rocket and the Rocket Racer have put us in the position now where we have uh, flight hardware on the shop floor, we're putting things together, we are building a spaceship called the Lynx, uh, designed to uh, fly to the suborbital flight regime. Uh, the prototype, Lynx-1, is only designed to fly to 200,000 feet. Uh, some of the technology development aspects that will be in Lynx-2, we didn't want to quite push those boundaries uh, for Lynx-1. So, as is always the case, the prototype's going to be a little bit heavier, a little bit less performance, and we knew, knew going into that with Lynx-1. Uh, nevertheless, the flight test program is going to be very exciting for a test pilot. I'm uh, really much more focused and concerned at this point on uh, um, the flights close to the ground and very early flights, you know, first flight, uh, envelope expansion, uh, flying qualities, stability and control, uh, basic systems performance, all of those things that absolutely must be in place uh, so that we can t continue on and then eventually push those uh, that envelope so we're getting to the higher altitudes and eventually, with links two, uh, go to uh, suborbital space and then operate it commercially. So very, very exciting stuff. Um, for me, on the, on the technical side, it's ex exactly what I want to be doing. My, my heroes growing up were all the test pilots out at Edwards. And then it, it really wasn't until I figured out, um, really a couple years after uh, Alan Shepard's and John Glenn's Mercury flights and the other Mercury flights, it wasn't until a couple years later as a young kid that I figured out that those astronauts were really jet pilots. I mean, that's where they started from. And I said, oh, I want to be an astronaut too. So for me, the love and the interest always came from, from the flying first. And what happened uh, in the test flying world out at Edwards um, has been really always my first love. So I'm just as excited as could be to be uh, a former astronaut who is also a future astronaut <laughs> working with X-Corps. How did you first connect with X-Corps? How did I first connect with X-Corps? Uh, the Internet's a wonderful thing. And, uh, it was 2003. I had actually gone back to work for NASA. I'd been out of, uh, retired from the Air Force and separated from NASA for a few years, but had the chance to go back to a test flying job at NASA Dryden Flight Research Center. Uh, there was not a lot going on there at the time in terms of research projects, a few interesting little projects. I was flying the F-18, so that's not half bad for a guy in his mid-40s. That was great. Um, but my long-term view of where NASA and government flight research was going was not rosy and not optimistic. Uh, so one day I just discovered, or I saw a little blurb in uh, one of the aerospace dailies or something about this little company and what they're doing, and I said, I need to call them up and just uh, go by and see what they're doing, like on the way home from work. And literally it was on the way home from work. Uh, popped in there and I was hooked instantly. They fired off their little T-cart engine, they call it. It's literally on a T-cart and uh, fired off this little rocket engine. I said, this is where the future is. Uh, so a couple years later, about a year and a half later, when the time came that I felt like I needed to move out in this new field and uh, if I was gonna be a pioneer, be a real pioneer. 
and uh, work with these new companies. I left NASA, uh, started my own speaking and consulting business, and then uh, reinitiated contact with XCOR and said, hey, I'm available now to help. What do you guys need to help? I said, well, initially help help us on the business side, make some introductions for us and so forth. And that has grown through the years into uh, the actual technical test flying position. Okay. Yeah. At the time that you joined XCOR, uh, just uh, who was in the company? How big was it? Yeah. Well, XCOR just had six people when I first got connected with them. Uh, the four founders, uh, Jeff Grayson, Dan DeLong, uh, Doug Jones, and Alita Jackson, who had all been together on the technical team that, that Jeff headed up at Rotary Rocket. They were the propulsion side of that project. Uh, when that project ended, for a variety of reasons, a business case and so forth, uh, they said, we don't want to let this dream die. Let's start our own company. We have our own concept of operations and where we want to go. And that was back uh, 99 time frame. Uh, so we've been around 13 years now and built slowly and surely. Uh, my initial involvement with them, again, was not on the technical side. It was just being a former astronaut, then out as kind of a free agent um, consultant. You know, made a few phone calls, connected them to a few things, which led to some, some business. Once people began to see the great technology they had and what they were doing with uh, liquid propellant rocket engines, uh, it's just grown since then. And today there's uh, close to 40 people. Correct. We have about 40 people working for us full time, and uh, we have no problems getting the sharpest technical minds around. I mean, they hunt us out, and I think it's and a lot of very young people. I'm reminded in a very positive sense of, of the age of the people that put us on the surface of the moon, and that is roughly the average age of people at the X Corps. If you look at the large number of youngsters, of course, we've got our gray beards, you know, uh, Jeff, Dan, myself, uh, who are still pushing forward the dream that. In my case, I got and never left uh, in the 60s as a young child seeing Apollo. And, and seeing you know, what we're doing in this new space world is, uh, is very similar to what was happening in the 60s in terms of just going out and making it happen. And it's marvelous to be part of.